What's the idea? Oh, wait a minute, Charlie. I'll tell you where we're going. Tangleton. Tangleton? Never heard of it. Neither have I. What I need's a drink. Oh, that's a coincidence. I need one, too. Well, they're open. What are we waiting for? The chief. He's called a conference. What, again? <laughs> it's the only fun the poor bloke ever has. Look out. Here he comes. Well, then, have you decided where you're going to begin? Yes, Mr. Colby. Tangleton. Tangleton? Never heard of it. And what was your particular reason for choosing that town? I didn't choose it. You told me to pick a place at random, so I let fate decide. I threw a dart into the board blindfold. Well, why select a town that nobody ever heard of? To show we've nothing up our sleeves. When you get Bennett's story, I want you to make a real splash. And if by any lucky accident, Charlie gets some good pictures, you can run a two-page spread. The morning record will vigorously support the government's policy of post-war planning. It's time that action was taken, and I'm convinced that by embarking upon this crusade, the morning record will be... I suppose this is the latest government, though. Oh, it's another bunch of pamphlets just come in from the Bureau of Municipal Research and Reconstruction. Ha! Huh. Just thought of a headline we can use. Be useful again. Have your town's face lifted. No wise cracks, Bennett. This is serious. I want these articles to show what our cities and villages are doing about town planning for the future. And what they aren't doing. Tangleton, Tangleton. Oh, here we are, Tangleton. Population 7,842. Market town situated on the River Tangle, now canalised. Market day once a week, Thursday. Principal industries are coal mining, brewing, and an old established cheese factory. Nobody in here. Take a picture, Charlie. What, with nobody in it? That's the idea. And get that clock on the wall. OK. All right. <whistles> nobody in there either. Not a soul. OK. Do you hear what I hear? A crooner. Let's take a look at that songbird. <laughs> A picture you will see of somebody I'll bet he's got dark flashing eyes, golden curly hair, an answer to a maiden's prayer. But now I'm gonna give you my view. If you want to get your photo in the press, you must be different some kind of way. Individuality plus personality is what you need today. I met a girl the other night, her name was Martha Hood. She'd lost her teeth, she wore a wig, one leg was made of wood. She said, there's not much of me, dear, but what there is is good. But they're going to put a photo in the press. If you want to get your photo in the press, you must be different some kind of way. Individuality plus personality is what you need today. It was Christmas in the workhouse and the pudding got the bird. The master cried, what shall I do? Then one chap, so I heard, just stood up on the table and he never said a word. But they're going to put his photo in the press. You must be different some kind of way. Individuality plus personality is what you need today. Now lately I've become well known, I'm sure you'll understand. It happened down at Blackpool with some ladies on the sand. They found me with my little ukulele in my hand, but they're going to put my photo in the press. Yep. 
In reply to yours of the ninth inst, asking us what colour the street shelter should be whitewashed, I, <coughs> I think that's all right now. I've just been testing it. I've fitted a loudspeaker to the system. They, they won't need headphones now. Of course, it's manpower shortage. We have to do our own repairs, you see. Don't you go out to lunch with the others? Well, it doesn't take me as long to eat my lunch. Besides, I like tinkering with machinery. Well, we're from the Morning Record, and we Ooh, wondered if you... Oh, that's a fine paper, isn't it? I take that every morning for the pictures, and the comic strip, of course. Did you want to see anybody in particular? Oh, no, you'll do all right. Uh, you must be a man of some influence in the town. Well, uh, I wouldn't go as far as to say that, but... Everybody knows me. I suppose that's because I'm connected with the town council. Good. Well, we've come down from London to take some pictures of Tangleton, and if you're not too busy, uh, sir, I wonder if you'd mind showing us the town. Oh, I'd love to. Oh. <laughs> I've made a record. I'll play it to myself one day. What sort of a place is Tangleton? Tangleton? Oh, it's a wonderful place. We're very proud of it. We've got a coal mine, a cheese factory, and I was born here. <laughs> That's our wonderful old church, built in the 15th century. They call it perpendicular style. Well, what else have you got to show us? Well, there's, uh... Oh, th th there's Sir Timothy Strawbridge's house. Wonderful man, Sir Timothy. Friend of yours? Is he? No. Practically nobody's ever seen him or spoken to him, but everybody in Tangleton loves him because he's such a generous and kind-hearted man. He's given us no end of libraries and hospitals and things. <laughs> Wonderful, but where do the real people live? Real people. Oh, you must be Mr. Oxbold. That's where he lives. Fine man. He's the chairman of our council. He's very generous and kind hearted, too. Wonderful man to work for. How many people live in that house? There. Let's see. One, two, four. Four? Okay, Charlie. Where do the little people live? Little people? Yes, the little people, the people who do all the work of the town. People who go to Home Guard and pay their income tax regularly and obey all the rules and regulations. Oh, you mean people like me? Well, you can't be interested in people like us or where we live. Well, where do you live? Well, if you must know. You see that black spot behind that smoke? Well, that's where I live, Paradise Row. That's our social club there. We're all members. Subscription, ten pence a pint. I think I'd like to join now. Oh, you can't. They're not open. <laughs> Which one's your house? This. Number 13. This is our house. Now, how many people live there? Let's see now, Alison. There'll be 14, including baby. 14, huh? Mm. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> what Mr. Oxbold be pleased when he sees this? Ribble, make the tea. Yes, sir. You're keeping Mr. Oxbold and the councillors waiting. Yes, Mr. Sanitary Inspector, sir. Come in right away. Any moment now, sir. And therefore I propose that in order to preserve our great and noble industry, cheese making, the rat catcher be paid a shilling a tail for his piecework instead of sixpence as at present. I object. Because the rat catcher is the sanitary inspector and Councillor Jug is the managing director of the cheese factory. What's that got to do with it? Because the sanitary inspector gets the cheese from him to feed his rats and then sells the tails to us. I demand an apology. Have you any evidence to support this serious accusation, Councillor Stubbins? The sanitary inspector is the councillor's uncle. I resent that insinuation. He's only my wife's uncle. I object. It is agreed that the increased payment for rat tails shall be made by the council to our hard-working sanitary inspector. Now, the next item on the agenda is uh, the Municipal Road Sweeper. Has Councillor Miffin's subcommittee prepared the report? We have, Mr Chairman. As you all know, the new Road Sweeper has recently been delivered and the down payment is now due. I object. How much is the down payment? Uh, 150 pounds. And just where will the council find 150 pounds? Nowhere. And if Councillor Stubbins will kindly keep his seat, I will continue the report. In view of our financial situation, the subcommittee recommends that the sweeper be returned to the maker. Mr. Chairman, I disagree with the recommendation of the committee. So do I. We badly need that new road sweeper. In my part of the town, Paradise Row, the streets are never properly swept. It is the duty of this council to provide Tangleton with a new road sweeper. And if we cannot find the money in the treasury, then we shall have to raise the rates. Raise the rates? 
With the municipal elections coming along in less than six months? Ah, the man must be crazy. Gentlemen, you may be surprised to hear that for the first time in our association, I find myself in agreement with Councillor Hopkins and his associates. We must keep our new road sweeper. Now, the General Purposes Committee will now go into executive session. And as is customary, the public gallery will be cleared. Ladies and gentlemen, please. What's the idea? Well, read this. And now that we're alone, I think I know how the money can be raised without drawing upon the town funds. The kind and generous Whitehall Bureau of Municipal Research and Reconstruction will give it to us. Do you mean the government will buy the new road sweeper for Tangleton? Well, not directly, Councillor Filbert. But they will give us a grant of £200 to carry out a public opinion investigation of our town. I object! What is a public opinion investigation? An investigation of the opinions of the public. Ah, what does the government want to know? Everything that doesn't concern them. In the interest of planning the clothes, the food habits, the housing conditions, the lives of our people, it is urged that every local government authority conduct this investigation for which a grant is offered. I still object. What's that got to do with sweeping roads? Nothing, of course. But it shouldn't cost us more than 50 pounds to get a man to go around asking these silly questions on these forms. And the other 150 could be used as down payment for our new road sweeper. It hardly seems to me to be honest. Well, but it's, but it's perfectly legal. The government don't ask how the money should be spent. They're only interested in getting a cross-section of public opinion. Any fool could ask the questions. Or even he could do it. Couldn't you, Gribble? Oh, yes, Mr. Oxbold. What? What did you want me to do, sir? Make a cross-section of the town. I'd need some very special tools to make that, wouldn't I? All you've got to do is to ask people questions. I couldn't do that. Why not? Well, they'd call me a nosy parker. It's the government that wants the information. Go oh. Of course, you will uh, be paid a little more for the work. How much do you want? Uh, 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 Twenty-seven pounds ten, sir. Twenty-seven pounds ten? Uh, yes, sir, if it's not too much. Well, I, uh, I think that will be considered a fair remuneration by the council. Here, here. Uh, there, there. Well, I, I object! Carried unanimously. All right, Gribble, you're engaged. Thank you, sir. Oh, and here's a copy of the official forms you'll fill up. Yes, sir. The Gribble. Oh, I'll give it to him. Here you are, Gribble. Thank you, sir. Do you eat pie? Don't the government want to know a lot of things? Yes, quite so. And remember, Gribble, the answers they give you will be strictly confidential. I'm sure in this capacity you'll do a very good job for Tangleton. Oh, yes, sir. I'd do anything for Tangleton. Oh, that reminds me. I've got something very interesting for you, Mr. Oxbow. Yeah. Oh, yes, very interesting. If I can only get up... Will you hold that a minute for me? Yes. If I can only get at it, yes. I bought it this morning for you. Oh, did you? Yes, and you're the fellow that should see one of a butcher's. What the devil's all this about? It's all about Tangleton. Good, isn't it? Filford, look at this. Good heavens. Tangleton is a disgrace to Britain. Ugliness, squalor, slums, dreadful oh, yes. overcrowding. Oh, yes. And what is the Tangleton Town Council doing about oh, it? It's nothing. Oh, they 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 look at your I big house, that. Mr. Oxbow. Yeah. Only four that. people live there. Oh, <laughs> listen, listen, it says here that these irresponsible scoundrels were actually taken round the town by an official of the council. Oh. I object. Oh. If I could get my hands on that traitor, I'd break every bone in his body. I yes. I yes. Show him for death. Yes. You rat. Who did it? Yes. Who did it? Gribble. <laughs> yes, Mr. Oxbold. Come here, Gribble. Well, well, I'm very sorry, Mr. Oxbold, but... I only looked at the pictures. I didn't read the writing underneath. Otherwise, I wouldn't have let you have the paper. Never mind that now. Look here, you've gotten the papers for your investigation. Now get on with the job and quickly. Yes, Mr. Oxford, I'll, I'll do my best. The result of this public opinion poll will be the best answer to this paper's unwarranted attack. Yes. Gribble, just a moment. Does this man really know what he is making the investigation for? Yes, for £27.10. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty-seven pound ten. You get me? Uh, well, Mr. McGlue, I can't because... Because why? Well, I haven't got it, sir. I want twenty-seven pound ten. Yes, so do I, Mr. McGlue. I want it bad to give it to you. You see, when I borrowed the money from you, I was expecting a baby. Yeah. I mean, my pal Joe was expecting a baby. I mean, his wife Kitty was, you see. Well, it was cash on delivery. You can't get babies on the eye purchase now, you know. Never mind why you wanted the money. 
When am I getting it back? Well, Mr. McGlow, if you'll only answer me a few questions. I'm asking you a question. When do I get my... £27.10, when I finish the job. What job? Asking questions. I'll get it honest. I don't care if you get it crooked. Mr. McGlow, the government wants to know... I don't care what the government wants to know. And don't you come back here again without my £27.10. Well, how am I going to finish my investigation if I don't even start? And you're my first investigator. Interested only in money. £27.10. The rent. Tell him I'm out. But I can't tell him that again. All right. I'll tell him myself. Why, it's George. Come in, George. We thought you were the man for the rent. Hello, Joe. Nice day, Kitty. Kettle's just boiling. I'll make you a nice cup of tea, George. Thanks. Joe, there's several questions I've got to ask you. I'm very sorry, George, but I honestly can't do anything about that £27.10 you lent me. E money is tight. <laughs> That's more than I can afford to be these days. In any case, I didn't come to see you about that. Oh, didn't you? No. Sorry I mentioned it. <laughs> oh, come to think of it, there's uh, something I ought to tell you. What, again? So soon? I can't understand it. Uh, I haven't got another £27.10, Joe. No. But never mind. I'll do something about it when the time comes. <laughs> you little thinker, aren't you? <laughs> now, come on, let's get down to business. The government wants to know, do you have five inches of water in your bath or more? A bath? In this house? <laughs> no bath. Do you wear long or short underpants? <laughs> <laughs> now, don't start laughing again. In any case, in all about them, I've seen them on Kitty's washing line. <laughs> Now, are you satisfied with the housing conditions in which you live? Are we satisfied? satisfied? What, with the roof all is leaking? And the plaster floor was falling down? Well, now, just take it down. Did you say what was going wrong? Floorboards coming loose. Oh, and having to fetch every drop of water from it's the tap in the street. Go a bit slow, Roof too low. And the rent too high. And the doorknobs all is coming the off. The walls almost perspiring. Oh, my. <laughs> Stimson and Sheehook. Yes, Sir Timothy. Come, 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 come. Swivel screw and bent bolt. Wrong tools again. You don't know one from another. And stop that confounded hammering. I'm afraid it's someone knocking at the door, sir. We'll go outside and stop them. It upsets me. You upset me. Everybody upsets me. I'm upset. Oh, oh, Sir Timothy, there's a few questions I'd like to ask you. I am not Sir Timothy, and we never answer questions. But I want to see Sir Timothy. We never see visitors, sir. Yeah, but, um, never. Oh, sir. Throw, those, throw those batteries away. I'm making a new electric circuit. I'm going to run all the bells in the house from the main. Special storage patent, 46,391. Oh, calamity! Some idiot rang the front doorbell. Go outside and wring his neck. Yes, sir. I must invent something to keep people from pestering me. Something sure and certain. But what? That is just to remind you, sir, that visitors are not encouraged at wit's end. Now, the next thing I want to know, Mrs. Lomas, is, do you wear long or short underpants? Do I hear you right, George? Yes, I want to know about your underpants. Are they long or are they short? No pants at all. <laughs> <laughs> Ah! 
The door opens out now. Precisely, sir. Sir Timothy has remodeled the door, not for the reception of visitors, but for their rejection. Good day, sir. Anything for a laugh, sir. Shall we try it again, sir? Not likely. What do you want after the war? Steak and chips and a pint of pre-war beer. How many nights a week do you get off? One, and that's book for a sergeant. But I might manage an afternoon. Um, huh? Are you satisfied with the housing conditions in which you live? Could you be satisfied if the roof leaked and the plaster keeps falling down? If the floors were rotten and the chimney smoked? The ceiling's too low. The rent's too high. Are you satisfied? Perfectly satisfied, thank you. Have you any rats? Only that one I married. Well, I live in Tangleton. It stinks. Quite happy, thank you. Every time I knock a nail in the wall, a bloke next door eggs his head on it. Madam, I've come to investigate you. Oh. Do you use more than five inches of underpants in your bath? Do you use electricity in your bath? Do you bath in gas or coal? Do you eat dried eggs? Do you like margarine? Do you want less bacon, more spam? Yes, the government wants to know. Perfectly satisfied. No, I'm not. Blame the cow. It stinks. No bar. No spam. No gas. No underpants. No electricity. I'm asking you. I still wear electric underpants. But I want to know. But I've got to know. Here is the news, and this is George Gribble reading it. Here is the booze, and this is George Gribble drinking it. Twelve and six a week for this. I pay a pound a week for this. For twenty-seven pounds, damn! There are rats in our house. There are rats on the council. There are rats, rats, rats on the council. The drains are wrong. The stairs are falling down. The ceilings are falling down. The house is falling down. Tangleton's falling down. Tangleton is falling down, falling down, falling down. Tangleton is falling down, my fair Georgie. I don't think we can do that. What's that? It's an outrage. What the devil's all this? The public opinion investigation of Tangleton, sir. 2,247 farms. What? You were only supposed to make a cross-section of the town. Well, that's what I've made. I've worn out five pairs of shoes making it. Making what? Cross-section. I've been crossing from section to section of the town, asking every household a question. You blithering idiot. You've interviewed every silly fool in Tangleton. I object. He interviewed me. That's what I said. I'm not so sure it's been a waste of time, Henry. What do you mean? This might turn out very much to our advantage. How so? We've got a 100% poll of the town, much more inclusive than any municipal election register. Why, you're right. We can prove by this survey that the vast majority of the citizens of Tangleton are perfectly satisfied with things as they are. Gribble, you asked people all the questions on the forms, didn't you? Yes, and didn't I get some funny answers? Mm -hmm. No doubt. But they're all perfectly satisfied with Tangleton, aren't they? Well, some of them are. Huh? Uh, I mean, quite a lot of them are, sir. Well, summing it all up, what would you say the general opinion is, Gribble? In these? Yeah. Uh, all the loafers and grafters on the council should resign. What? Oh, that's the wrong one, sir. What would you do to improve the conditions in Tangleton? Well, well, what's the answer? Uh, uh, get rid of Oxbold and the council. They're a gang of... You wouldn't be interested in that, sir. A gang of what? Uh, lazy crooks. 
But he is a lovely one, sir. Tangleton is a beautiful town and we all love it. Nothing should be changed. We must trust in the wisdom of our councillors. Ha! Huh, at last a man of sense. Mm. Who answered that? He did. Oh. Gribble, you can go now. Well, can I have my £27.10, please? Oh, we'll see about that later. But, Mr. Oxbull, you said when I'd finished the... Later! Call, I... Well, I've worked very hard on this survey, sir. I... Later! Yes, sir, a little later. Say, thank you, sir. Instructions say, when forms are completed, send to the Bureau of Municipal Research and Reconstruction, Whitehall, London. I'd better post them off now, hadn't I, Mr. Oxbold? Post them to Whitehall? Why, man, there's dynamite in these forms. What? Political and social dynamite. Oh, that kind. Now, all of you, we've got to work quickly. Separate these forms into two piles. Those who are for us, and those who are against us. I always knew there were some idiots and troublemakers in Tangleton, but I never realized there were so many of them. If this town had a roof on it, it would be a lunatic asylum. If we're not very careful, those lunatics will force town planning down our throats. Well, what's wrong with town planning? What's wrong with it? Well, that's what I asked you. There's no harm in planning towns, is there? Seems to me it's like jigsaw and crossword puzzles, and I'm very clever at working them out. Well, perhaps you'll be clever enough to work this out. Some crackpot sent it to me this morning. Ooh, very pretty. Very pretty indeed. It's what those middle from town planners proposed to do to Tangleton. Nice little park and gardens here, Stubbins, don't you think? Very pretty, yes. And do you know what large building now occupies this site? Ho, oh, oh, what's it, madam? Why, that's where my corset factory is. Precisely. And I believe my bank holds a mortgage on it. So you'd like to tear down your factory and build another one just where they tell you to? I object. And for the first time, all of us here are objecting with you. For we all own property that these crazy fools want to condemn and pull down. If any of you disagree with me, we can discuss the matter when you next call at my bank to renew your loans. Of course we all agree course. with you, Henry. Henry. Well, I thought you would. Now, what's the best thing to do about these forms? Well, all these people say nice things about us, Mr. Oxbold. Well, only those forms will go to Whitehall. A hundred percent vote in our favour. Hardly wise, Henry. Even the Nazis allowed two percent to vote against them in their elections. Hmm. Well, we'll allow the opposition 5%, and that's being very generous. Post those off to Whitehall and burn the rest. I object. Oh, for heaven's sake, why? It's against the law to burn public documents. He's right, Henry. It is against the law. If there's any dirty work to be done, we mustn't get mixed up in it. Mm. Well, I'll take care of that. Wrap those up in some old newspapers. Yes, Mr. Oxbold. Well, it doesn't look as though we had much of a chance at the municipal election next month. If that's what people think about us. So we've no time to waste. What this council needs is a little window dressing. Window dressing? Why, what have we got to sell? Ourselves, and we need someone to head our list. A candidate with a name so well respected in Tangleton that everybody will vote for him and thus carry us along. Just whom did you have in mind, Henry? A man of title, money and position. Sir Timothy Strawbridge. Sir Timothy Strawbridge? Hmm. Is that a wise move? We've got a lot at stake in this and our business interests might suffer if his political opinions are not the same as ours. That's right. None of us has met the fellow. How do we know he's safe? Oh, he's as safe as houses, the big houses he owns. Any man who is worth two million pounds must be sound at heart. And his name means something in the town. The Strawbridge Hospital, the Strawbridge Library, the Strawbridge Community Hall. Anyway, Gribble should know what Sir Timothy thinks about everything. Come out the way, come out the way. That's Mr. Oxbow. Number two, hey, happy. Number three, driver. Blimey, all hands on deck. Yes? Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Oxbold, sir. They are. They want me to come. Did you hear the Oh, yes, sir. Coming right away. Yes, Mr. Oxbold. I heard all the buzzers. Coming right away. And don't stop to pick up anything you've dropped. Yes, sir. No, sir. Don't go away, Mr. McGlue. I'll be back in a few minutes with the £27.10. You wanted to see me, Mr. Oxbold? Yeah, well, you claim to have made a 100% survey of the town? Yes, sir, 100%. Well, quite so. Then I take it that apart from the riffraff of the town, you also interviewed some of our more responsible citizens, like Sir Timothy Strawbridge, for example. Oh, yes. I interviewed lots of people like Sir Timothy Strawbridge. And I suppose he told you he was perfectly satisfied with the conditions in Tangleton, didn't he? Well, he didn't exactly say so. Did he say yes? No. Did he say no? Yes, no. What the devil did he say? I don't know. You mean you can't remember? He didn't tell me. He didn't answer your questions? I never asked him any. Why not? Mr. Oxbold, have you ever seen a door that opens in today and out tomorrow and to the left yesterday and to the right next week? And... 
and one day with hinges down this side of the door and inches down that side of the door and swings down sometimes and it's on top of the head and other times swings up and mad butlers rush out and bark at you like a dog. Woof! 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 What the blazes are you talking about? I'm telling you, Mr. Oxbold, I tried and tried and tried and then tried again for months and months. But I could never get into the house to see him. Now we know what Sir Timothy thinks about things. You can have me £27.10 now, please, sir. Certainly not. You won't be paid a penny till you finish the job and bring Sir Timothy's form properly filled up. But, Mr. Oxbold... Here they are, Mr. Oxbold. Oh. Uh, please, Mr. Oxbold, I'll do my best. I'll try, really. Just one moment, Gribble. Here are some old confidential documents of the Council we want burnt. You understand? Yes. Burnt. Put them in the incinerator at once. Yes, sir. At once, sir. Yes, sir. I thought I'd catch you sneaking around the back. But honestly, Mr. McGlue, I, I was only going to burn these old papers in the incinerator. Ah, think of another. You, an official of the council, burning papers. I'd be breaking the law, wouldn't I? Come on, Gribble, hand over my money. Well, you see, there's been a sort of a technical glitch. What? Well, all I've got to do is ask Sir Timothy Strawbridge a few little questions and... See how easy it is. Mr. Oxbold will pay me, then I'll pay you. I suck the clock tonight, Gribble, or I'll set you up. I don't want any more trouble with this loan. Oh, I wouldn't dream of making trouble for a nice man like you, Mr. McGlue. Especially with such a nice, kind face. Timothy's compliment, sir, and he'd be charmed if you partake of some refreshments with it. Likewise charmed, I'm sure. Thank you, sir. And this way. On a boniac that lost one leg at Waterloo With a gun in a holster and a pillar and a bolster and a mattress and enamel What's her name? I'm Hillbilly Willy from the Cowheel Range Riding across the Wigan Plain When I'm tired of the saddle I get off the horse and paddle Then I get a cheap return and catch the train I'm Hillbilly Willy from the Cowheel Range, riding across the Wigan Plain. With the feather duster in the Bronco's tail, we can swish away the fly. Get away, fly. We gallop backwards up and down the trail to keep the dust out of our eyes. All the tough guys, I meet them, then I beat them up and beat them, and the dust cart comes and gathers up the slain. I'm Hillbilly Willy from the Cowheel Range, riding across the Wigan Plain. Saloon bars, I stick up all the fag ends, then I pick up and the drinks they leave behind, I quickly drain. I'm Hillbilly Willy from the Cowheel Range, riding across the Wigan Plain. Once a mole got me guessing, and with me she started messing, and me covered wagon now is not the same. I'm Hillbilly Willy from the Cowheel Range, riding across the Wigan Plain. When I meet a redskin, me gun I draw, as quick as I draw breath. Every blinking redskin is a dead skin, sure I've got the redskin skin to death. Yes, sir, there's a dame, she's got two daughters, they've got very big iron quarters, and their ups and downs are nearly twice the same. They fall for hill, billy, willy of the cowheel range, riding across the Wigan Plain. 
Get up there, horse, get up there. Please. Tangleton 5 2 and Tell him to throw you out. But how can I bring him? He's already thrown me out. Eight times, Sir Timothy. Well, this is the ninth time. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Yes, sir. Now I can't remember what I wanted a phone for. Oh. I must have got him on the brain. Oh, well, I'll cut to our house. Oh, the man must be an idiot. See what's wrong, don't you? Yes, won't go. And why? He's got it all backwards. Ah, well, perhaps he wanted to go backwards. Problem's perfectly simple. Two cylinders missing. Oh. him anywhere. Boh! Everything's higgledy-piggledy. The dynamo needs rewinding and, and the carburetor's flooded. Ah, well, that'll be the rain yesterday. Stilson. How do you do, Mrs. Stilson? Oh, I know what you want. Ah, the right tool. Yeah, I'm not such a fool as I look, you know. Slips and cold chisel. Coming up. Chips and cold snizzle. Right again. <laughs> Stop, fellow. Hey, be careful, you might break it. Well, I can't mend it if it isn't broken, can I? <laughs> You're quite right. I've got it. Now, that's entirely unnecessary. Throw it away. Huh? Throw it away. Just as you say. Now turn her over. What, all by myself? Oh, you mean with the hands at the front? You know, I don't think we should be doing this. Contact. Contact. Hey, hey! Woo! Hey, it's knocked it off! I know, I've started it. Hey, what are you doing now? Looking at the watch. Get down and drive it! 
this house. We can't get out now. The house is surrounded. Well, what do we do? Is it you, darling? No. Oh. I meant, yes, darling. What are you doing, darling? I'm very busy, darling. Don't be long, darling. I want to talk to you. All right, darling. That fooled her. She won't come in now. Ah, hear that clock? There's a job you and I can do. Oh, no, you don't. Not while I'm with you. You wait here. I'll get the clock. Oh, they're bound to arrest us. If they arrest you, admit nothing. What can they prove if they search you? No evidence? Oh, what a crook. What the? Where has he gone? Let's have a look in the shed. Mr. 
may be in the house. What on earth are you up to now? <coughs> How many times have I told you not to go up that chimney? The sweet can do it much better than you. If you don't come down at once, I'll be very angry. <gasps> I say, I'm terribly sorry. I must have pressed the wrong button. Are you hurt? Think nothing of it, miss. All in the execution of duty. But I've never seen a front door open like that before. That's a special strawberry patent. What could I do for you? We are making inquiries as to the whereabouts of two persons responsible for wrecking the municipal road sweeper and for the theft of municipal property. Well, it's all very exciting, but what's it got to do with me? We have reasons to believe that said persons, chargeable with the aforesaid breaches of the peace... Oh, cut are... the cackle, Mike. We want them guys and we want them bad. Say, you must be an American. Yeah, not him. He gets that way spending all his off-duty time at the flicks. OK, OK. Now, miss, these birds we're looking for were seen climbing over the wall into your back garden. We've got a hunch they're in your house right now. What sort of birds were they? One was an old guy who wore a funny cap with uh, ear flaps on it. The other looked a mighty ugly customer. Well, there's no one in the house except me and my father. He's halfway up the chimney. He's found a new way to sweep it without using any brushes. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for warning me. So, you've been up to your old tricks again, have you? And this time, the police are after you. I have a good mind to turn you over to me. It'll teach you a lesson. <gasps> uh, don't turn me over to the police, miss. I didn't mean any harm. Honestly, I didn't. Who are you? I'm an accident. But... I mean, it, it was an accident, you see. The other fellow and me, we were running away from the police. I'm beginning to understand. You're the ugly customer. Well, he gets into enough trouble without having someone like you help him into it. Now you get out of here. Don't you dare come back to this house again. Yes, miss. But what if they're outside waiting for me? Well, that's your lookout. Oh! I'm sorry, miss. I must have got in the way. I think the police have gone now. You better run for it. Yes, sir. I will. Well, of all the twerps, I was already in and didn't know it. You're in danger, terrible danger. There's a strange man in the house. There certainly is. He's a burglar. What burglar are you talking about? The man that broke in the house with me. I mean, he broke in and then pushed me through the window. Then I helped him mend the road sweeper and it all went wrong again and the police chased us. Now he's trying to steal your clocks. <laughs> Please believe he's a desperate character. <laughs> Don't I know it? <laughs> there he is. Bring me your clock now. Hey, stop, stop. You can't do that. You're right. It's too heavy. I need help. Take the other end. Oh, no, no you don't. <laughs> Speak to me, speak to me, Daddy. Daddy, you mean he's... My father, Sir Timothy Strawbridge. Now get out of here and stay out. Oh, what have I done now? Oh, please, Sir Timothy, listen to Timothy. I didn't know you was you. Daddy, speak to me. Yeah, Daddy, speak to us. I mean, Sir Timothy, speak to us. I didn't, I mean, I wasn't, I, I, I thought... You thought you were a burglar, darling, stealing your own clock. Not worth stealing, Jane. Always out of order. Ah, you can help me here, young fellow. Ah, all bits and pieces. That's the way I like things. <laughs> well, I certainly won't have to help you take it apart. Let's get to work. Come on. Oh. Just look at yourself, all covered with dust. What you need is a bath. Nonsense, Jane. It'll all brush off. Oh, uh, Father, why don't you show him all those wonderful gadgets of yours in the bathroom? Excellent idea, Jane. This will interest you. The Strawbridge Medical Bathroom. Every apparatus the Strawbridge patent. Oh. And while you're at it, see he gets a bath as well.
Don't you use water in your shower, sir? Water? Oh, yes, 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 water, yes. Turn on the tap mark, singing in the rain. Please, Sir Timothy, will you answer me a few questions for the public opinion investigation, please? Excellent idea, this public opinion investigation. Find out what people think. Mm. Good. Glad to answer your questions. You mean, you mean you don't mind? Mind? Of course I wouldn't mind. Why didn't you come round and see me before? Before? Skip it. Now then, Sir Timothy, what, what in your opinion do you think the town needs most? A new road sweeper. I'll give them one that works backwards and sideways. My own design. Sliding gears, reversible cogs, expanding three-way differential. I wear them long in winter and short in summer. any of the rascals. You know them, you write the answers. Yes. Whoa! I wish you wouldn't stop so quick, you'll have me off this thing, I've no brakes. Horsley Joiling. Yes. <laughs> Councillor Filbert is a very nice man. So is the sanitary inspector. Sometimes. Councillor Oxbold is a wonderful man. Now listen to me. As far as your plan is concerned, you can publish it if you like, but Tangledon doesn't want it. And we've already finished that damn survey. And it's not just a cross-section, it's a hundred percent poll. A hundred percent, you say? Well, most unusual. I'm afraid it's going to be rather difficult to persuade our readers that such a comprehensive survey has been made. I'll prove it to you. I'll send you documentary evidence. The survey shows that the vast majority of the citizens of Tangleton are perfectly satisfied with the housing conditions in which they live. Yes, of course. All the forms in the survey were sent to Whitehall. Goodbye. They was a blowing all over the streets, so I picked up these. Look, is Mrs. Brown's the number four. Mr. Brown was my second husband, and she wore white at her wedding. <coughs> That damn fool Gribble has been monkeying with this machine again. Where's the cylinder? I think I saw one somewhere around here, Mr. Oxbold. Ah, here it is. Part of it has been used, but there's still room here to say a little more. Well, put it on the machine. I want to dictate a letter to the editor of the morning record. Strawbridge Baton, 46,302. Shaves, massages and powders your face in one motion. Another Strawbridge Baton, 46,303. Tell your weight and your fortune at the same time. Here are some pennies. Try it out. You weigh 11 stone 3 pounds. This is your unlucky day. You have been warned. You weigh 11 stone 3 pounds. This is your unlucky day. You have been warned. You weigh 10 stone 7 pounds. You are an inventive genius and will always be lucky. Keep your money, sucker. I've told you twice already. <gasps> Beg your pardon. I've got it, Mr. Oxbull. I've got it at last. Timothy Sobbage's form. He answered all the questions. Now, can I have me 27 pounds 10, please? Well, Gribble, there's just one little formality to go through before you receive the money. I've got a statement here which I want you to sign first. Excuse me, Mr. Oxbold. The letter to the morning record. And should I type the song, too? Song? What song? If you want to get your photo in the press. All of us girls thought it was ever so nice. If you want to get your photo in the press, you must be different some kind of way. Who the devil sang that song? 
I did, Mr. Oxbow, sir. You did? Only to test the machine, it was out of order, and I was fitting a loudspeaker. Well, we're from the morning record, and we want to issue a fine paper, isn't it? A fine paper? What? Well, we've come down from London to take some pictures of Tangleton, and if you're not too busy, uh, sir, I wonder if you'd mind showing Mr. Town. Oh, I'd love to. Can I have me £27.10 now, please, sir? The service finished and... <laughs> Perhaps I'd better come back later. Gribble! Yes, sir? So you're the traitor who betrayed Dangleton? Oh, Mr. Oxbolt, I never did. I didn't mean any harm. I was only trying to help. You can consider your engagement with the town council terminated. But you can't mean you don't want me here anymore. You're discharged. You can't mean I have to collect my cards. You're set. You can't mean you're giving me the push. You're fired. From all my jobs, you can't mean every single one of them. Get out of here. You'll be lucky if I don't have you put in jail. Well, can I have me £27.10, please? Eustace, throw him out. Yes, Mr. Oxbold. But I finished the survey. You can't do this to me. I've always done my work. It's criminal. It's unjust. It's unfair. Watch it, George. How do? All right. <laughs> oh, Mr. McGlue. It's awfully nice of you to come and see me, Mr. McGlue, and you brought a friend with you, too. Of course, any friend of Mr. McGlue's is a friend of mine. My name's George Gribble. Oh, I'm the bailiff! <laughs> Pleased to meet you, the bailiff. The bailiff? You mean... He means business. Have you got my £27.10? Well, I haven't exactly got it in my pocket at the moment, but Mr. Oxball owes me £27.10, and I owe you £27.10, so us three ought to get together, don't you think? That's enough of that, Gribble. Bailiff, show him the right. Did I hear our Georgie come in just now? Ah, oh, you didn't know. He looked fair upset about something. Eh, perhaps his friends upstairs will cheer him up. Hey, hey, you can't take me, you. Oh, can't we? We can take everything if you don't pay up. Carry on, Bailiff. Instrument, musical, one. Gribble, the Bailiff will remain until the judgment of it is satisfied. He's stopping here till I've paid you the £27.10. It'll cost you a great deal more than that now, Gribble. You'll have to lodge him. Lodge him? And feed him. Feed him? Aye, and you'll have to pay his fees. Have to lodge him, feed him, and fee him? That's right, my boy. Six shillings a day as long as you keep me here. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to keep me here. I can't afford a bailiff. I've never kept a bailiff in my life. Ah, you'll get used to me, my boy. You and I'll be made in no time. You don't snore, though, do you? <laughs> but you can't sleep here. There's only one bed. I never sleep on more than one bed at a time. <laughs> Remember, Bailiff, nothing must be removed from this room. Thought you'd like your supper up here, George, so that you can talk to your friend. He let us got a nice bottle of beer for you, too. Thanks, Ma. Now, eat your find it up, George. That's the sort of landlady to have. She makes this place a proper home from home. Bottle be a one, empty. <laughs> this newspaper states that Tankerton prefers its slums. Do we prefer our slums? No! <laughs> Dirty work, I tell you, and we've got to get to the bottom of it. They make what they call a public opinion investigation to find out what we think about things and what happens. They throw away our horses! That's it. <laughs> the Tangleton that might have been. Have you seen this picture of Tangleton, Ma? Tangleton? Huh? Don't look much like Tangleton to me. It's not what it is now, it's what it might be. All neat and pretty. Well, why can't we live in a lovely place like that? Yeah, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? Oh, you see all sorts of funny things in the papers these days. Well, George, I'm off to do the marketing now. Cheer up. Keep out of mischief. Bye, ma. Morning, George. Morning, Mrs. Goosens. George, everybody's looking for you. Looking for me? Why? 
I don't know, but they seem proper mad about summit. Who is Joe? Everybody. They're coming down the street now. You better make yourself scarce. Why should I? I don't know where I've done nothing wrong. There he is. There's Gribble. Gribble, you were responsible for the public opinion investigation in Tangerville, weren't you? That's right, sir. I filled out all the forms. And where are those forms now? Can you answer me that? Yes, I can answer that. They all went to Whitehall. Then what do you call that? Where did all these forms come from? As if you don't know. You threw them away yourself. That's a lie. I never did. Then there's a statement in the paper signed by you that you post all the forms off to Whitehall. You and the gang you're working for didn't want the government to know what we said about the stinking living conditions in Tankerton. That's right. You don't want us having new houses to live in. But we're going to get them, Gribble, aren't we? Yeah. Well, I can't understand where all these forms came from. You and another one have chucked the forms all over the streets. What other fella? The fella that was driving the road sweeper with you. The road sweeper? I ought to string the tire of you up and I'm going to stop yes! it. Yes! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, get up, come on. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. about you and I and the road sweeper. How did you get in? Through the window. Window? What are doors made for? To knock people about. Listen, you pop back through the window, run round the house and try and get in the front door. Just install new strawbridge patent on it. I'm going to watch. <laughs> Sir Timothy, Sir Timothy, what a marvellous fridge. Did you build it yourself? Strawbridge patent 46,406. Lights show interior temperature. Watch closely. Number one, now it's 50 degrees, mild weather, but a depression is approaching from Iceland. Now what's this? Number two, 40 degrees, that's pretty cold, wind blowing from the north. Number three, damn cold, north wind blowing harder. All lamps on at once, zero. We're at the North Pole, ice age, ice cream freezes in five seconds. Go. Oh. Isn't that an awful waste of current, Sir Timothy? Those lights burning all the time. Lights don't burn when the door is closed. Open the door, lights go on. Close the door, lights go off. How do you know all the lights go off? Made that way. Door closes, contact breaks. All lights go off. But are you sure it works, Sir Timothy? My patents always work. Now watch closely. All lights on? Right? Right. All lights off? Right? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Of course they're off. They must be off. Oh, perhaps they're still on. On? Yes. What? Couldn't see. I just pop inside and make sure. What? I don't know. Too quick. We're off this time. I didn't notice. I had my eyes shut. I'll turn on all the lamps double force. Can you see now? Hey. Don't want any. Never use them. Go away. We're looking for George Gribble. Never heard of him. Oh, front doorbell. Oh, oh, oh. Uh -huh. We don't want any. We never use them. Go away. D don't you, Sir Timothy. I brought you a special letter. It's from Mr. Oxbold. Oxbold? Never heard of him. Chairman of the Council, Sir Timothy. Well, come on, give it to me. Go on. and bunkum. I never heard of such a thing. What is it, dear? Oh, some damn fool idea, Jane. What is? Well, somebody at the town hall wants to nominate me for their silly council. But, Father, that's a wonderful idea. You could do so much good. Fiddlesticks, a waste of time. I want to drink. Oh, 
Excuse me. Father, I really do think you ought to accept the nomination. Inexplicable. Oh, darling, don't be like that. Tangles need someone like you on the council. No, 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 it can't be. Quite impossible. It's not a bit impossible. Can't be. Silly. Damn silly. It's not silly at all. It's very sensible. People don't do those things. Well, responsible people do. Must be dreaming. Right out of the question. But, Father, it's not. You're sure to be elected. The whole thing's ridiculous. You just don't look at things the right way. Well, I looked straight in, didn't I? And there he was. Whatever are you talking about? Who was where? Actually, for the moment, I imagined that I saw somebody sitting inside that fridge. Oh, darling, don't be so absurd. <laughs> what? Sarah! I was right. There was someone there after all. He's frozen stiff. Help me get him out. Now, answer me. The lights went out and the door was closed, didn't they? No, oh, no, I couldn't say. Nonsense. Go back in the fridge and find out. No, no. My boy, your duty to science. Father, do leave him alone. He's suffering now. Larynx out of kilter. Epiglottis needs gluing. Birds moulting. Spring, of course. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. Mr. Robridge. Larynx out of kilter? No, just frozen. I've made an awful lot of trouble for you. Since my father's fridge froze you up, it was up to me to thaw you out. Oh, you did that fine. Icicles all gone and my knees all melted. <laughs> Ooh. I must have ice water on the knee. <laughs> oh. Oh, well, that's just exactly like the picture that was in the morning record. It should be. I sent it to them. You... Do you mean you drew that all by yourself? Yes. Do you like it? Yes, I do, Miss Strawbridge. You must be one of those artist people. I'm a school teacher on summer holiday, but I'm studying architecture and town planning. Town planning? What's that? Well, it's making a beautiful town out of a jerry-built leftover of the Industrial Revolution. Making decent homes for decent people to live in. It'll mean tearing down everything that's dirty and ugly and building up something clean and fresh. Everyone getting together and working to a plan instead of just muddling along, each one thinking only of his own interests. Wouldn't Tangle to be nice if it was all like this? Why don't you send it to Mr. Oxbold? I did. He did? And what did he say? No. See that park and recreation ground with all those bright modern houses round it? Uh -huh. Well, that's where Paradise Row and the other slums are now. Do you think Oxbold would want all that torn down? Well, I don't see why not. Because he collects fat rents from those miserable hovels. Mr. Oxbold doesn't own them. It's the Happy Homes Limited. I know. I live there. And the chief shareholder of Happy Homes Limited is Henry Oxbold. Oh. Oh, I see it all now. All what? All Mr. Oxbold. That explains everything about the public opinion investigation I made. You made that survey? Yeah. Oh. Then perhaps you can tell me why most of the people are against town planning. But they're not Miss Strawbridge. Most of the people told me they didn't like the housing conditions in which they lived. But all those forms were thrown away in the streets. Thrown away? Yeah. You mean the official investigation forms were? Well, who did it? Me. You? Yes, I did it, but I didn't mean to. Mr. Oxbold played a dirty trick on me. I'm sure of it now, and I know exactly how he worked it. And that, Miss Strawbridge, is the truth. Father, I've just found out that Tangleton was run by a bunch of crooks. Always has been, always will be. <coughs> must have oiled the damn bird with gin. <coughs> Darling, listen to me. You must do something about it. It's nothing to do with me. It's everything to do with you and everybody else who lives here. If men like you don't face up to their responsibilities, this town will always be the mess it is now. Father, you must accept that nomination. I can't be bothered. Much too busy with my patents. Now, see here, young man. This is Strawbridge Payton, 46,508. An automatic, universal recordex. Isn't my father as stubborn as a mule? Oxbell wants him to stand for the next council election. Don't you think it's a good idea? Yes, I do. Oh, you'd be fine on the council system with you could help all the little people in Tangleton. Oh, the little people of Tangleton ought to help themselves. That's a wonderful idea. Huh? That's just what's needed. Someone on the council who knows the people. All about their lives, their hopes, their dreams. Don't you agree with me? Yes, Miss Strawbridge. Indeed, I do. Then that settles it. Father, nominate him. Me? Oh, why not? You live in Paradise Row. You know everybody in Tangleton. Why, you conducted the investigation. You know what people want. You'd make an ideal councillor. 
But, Miss Strawbridge, a chap like me couldn't be a councillor. I haven't the brains to be a politician. Don't need brains. Look at the Commons, House of Lords. What's your name? Sir George Gilbert Gribble. I mean, George Gilbert Gribble, sir. You'll back Mr Gribble, won't you, Father? Why not? He knows one tool from another, can drive a road sweeper backwards and sideways, can dive through a window, and didn't freeze solid at zero temperature. Hmm. If he can stand all that, he can stand politics. Stout fellow. You qualify, my boy? Property owner? Well, I don't think I own any property, sir. Furniture your own? I mean, my very own. Well, I bought it all, and it's still in my little room. I've sort of got somebody kind of watching it for me. Good, you're also an employer of labour. You're nominated, Gribble. Nominated? And I could help you with the town planning part, if you wanted me to. Oh, of course, I'd want you to. That would be wonderful, Miss Strawbridge. But, but Sir Timothy, I'd be scared stiff. Huh? Scared stiff? Of who? Oxbold? I'm not scared of him. Well, not anymore. He makes me so mad that I could... I could... Run against him? Yes, run and give him start and then beat him. That settles it, then. Will you get me the morning record in London, please? Hey, what are you going to tell that newspaper? You're going to do the talking as the new candidate for the Tangleton Urban District Council. If it, I'm, I'm. Hello? And although I know it's not on the agenda, I think we must discuss this newspaper interview with a new candidate in the election. Yeah, yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Order, order. Instead of the subject open for discussion. I object. To what? To this newspaper interview with the candidate. That's what we're going to discuss. Oh. Very well, I, uh, <coughs> I withdraw my objection. <laughs> in this scandal sheet, a man dares to bring an accusation against the veracity, nay, the very integrity of the city fathers, and to slander the fair name of Tangleton. George Gilbert Gribble seems to make town planning the centre plank in his ridiculous political platform. As the facts are, he hasn't got a leg to stand on. Of course, you have got two legs to stand up about those. Can you account for that? They haven't been delivered, have they? They haven't well, been no. delivered. <laughs> George Gilbert Gribble, who knows the people's lives, their hopes, their dreams, states that the results of the investigation he conducted would have proved that the great majority of the citizens of Tangleton want town planning. If the council hadn't deliberately cooked the survey. <laughs> order, order. Who is this man who dares to make such accusations against faithful public servants? He is a former, very minor employee of this council who was discharged for incompetence and prevarication. I wouldn't have to be annoyed if I knew what he was calling me. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, can you prove that the charges made by Mr. Gribble about the public opinion poll are quite unfounded? Yeah. <laughs> I think that this letter from Whitehall is proof enough. In view of the almost unanimous approval of the people of Candleton of the housing conditions in which they live, we must withdraw the offer of a government subsidy to help in the planning of your town. It's a big fib. Most of the people in Tangleton want something done about it. I know what they said. I asked all the questions and I wrote down all the answers. But you, Mr. Oxbow, didn't like most of those answers. That's why you didn't send them to London. <laughs> it's true. You're responsible, Mr. Oxbow. You're trying to cheat the people of Tangleton, but you can't get away with it. I'll beat you, Mr. Oxbow. I'll beat you. How am I doing? You, sir. Throw that man out. Yes, Mr. Oxbow. Listen. Music! It's a parade! Never mind about him now, George. This is much more important. Listen to me. We must get hold of those forms that were thrown away and send them to Whitehall. Well, what's that going to do with us? Well, don't you see? Those forms prove that the people really want town planning. By gum, you're right, Jane. Oh, I call you Jane. Well, that's the name, isn't it? George? <laughs> We've got them. We've got a lot of those lost forms, Mr. Bennett. A lot of them. Good work, George. But do you mean to say you've got most of them? Well, enough to settle Mr. Oxbold. We're going to let all the people see them at the mass meeting tomorrow afternoon, after the town planning exhibition. Yes, sir, we're going to make Mr. Oxbold look pretty sick. Good for you, George. Hold on a minute. Can we get a town on this? And how? Jim, 
Hold the front page for replating. I think I can get the Under Secretary for Municipal Reconstruction to open that tangled and show for you. Only be quite sure of your grounds, Bennett. Fine. George, my boy, we're going to help you out with this. But don't forget you look pretty silly yourself tomorrow afternoon if anything happens to those forms. Guard them with your life because the Under Secretary himself is coming along to open the show. The Under Secretary himself? Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Yes, sir. Three o'clock tomorrow afternoon at the Strawbridge Hall. Goodbye, sir. Oh, Jane, that's wonderful. You're wonderful. Everything's wonderful. Is it, George? I never thought I stood a chance before. I'm bound to be elected now. Of course you will be. You'll cook Oxbell's goose. Good idea, Jane. You get the goose, I'll cook it. We'll have a celebration. <laughs> it seems a bit early for a celebration, Sir Timothy. Nonsense. Now's the time. Works perfectly. <laughs> He's still talking about his own machine. Nothing like it in the world. Nobody would believe what that machine can do. Can't believe it myself. Here's to Strawbridge Automatic Universal Recordex. Here's to you, George. May you always get everything you want. Oh, I could never hope to be as lucky as all that. Well, I've got to test my machine. You two are upsetting me with your chatter. Father, we weren't talking to you, only to each other. What are gardens made for, eh? <laughs> for young people to talk to each other, of course. Come on, George. Let's leave the old bear with his machinery. There's a full moon. Don't get moonstruck. Papers, papers. Turned out nice again, didn't it? Yes, it did. It's a lovely moon. Nice smell. I mean, the flowers and things, are, they're lovely, aren't they? And you're... <laughs> Jane, if I'm elected... You mean when you're elected? Mm, not so sure that I will be. suppose a young woman like you meets... Lots of nice young handsome men. Oh, an awful lot. But I don't care much for nice, handsome young men. Oh, that's fine. Uh, don't you? I mean, you, then you never... You haven't... Uh, you never fell in love? No, never. Did you? Oh, no. I mean, never. Before. Before what? Before I met her. And when you fell in love, I bet you were too scared to tell her about it. Oh, I'm never scared, but <laughs> sometimes a chap gets so choked up he can't talk very well. Oh, music. That's father's idea of romantic music for the garden. <laughs> Yeah. It's a wonderful idea. That's all I wanted. <laughs> Perhaps I'd be too scared to tell that girl what I felt, but I could sing it to her. Casablanca, Washington, London and Quebec Teach us all that someone's gonna get it in the neck It seems to me a good idea to state what we can do Two simple words comprise the terms I'm offering to you Unconditional surrender That's the thing I'm fighting for Unconditional surrender From the one that I adore Every time I ask for kisses Every time I hold your hand All you'll say is if or maybe <laughs> I find it hard to understand on the days we have a date You arrive hours late I think that I'll try being tough Guess I'll treat you rough Unconditional surrender And I'm not accepting less Unconditional surrender Just a straight plain forward yes Unconditional surrender That's the thing that I advise Unconditional surrender Let me see it in your eyes Never mind about defences <laughs> Disregard them from the start When you finish with pretences Let me occupy your heart 
Love your figure, <laughs> love your skin. I'd like to be your next of kin. Sign upon the dotted line. Say that you'll be mine. Unconditional surrender. Don't be so damn hard to get. Unconditional surrender. Merely say you'll be my pet. How do? Lost something? <laughs> no. George, it's getting late and we've all got a very busy day tomorrow, so I think we ought to say good night. Yes. Uh... Hey, you've left these. Oh, my forms. I must be going daft, Mr. Bennett. Told me to guard them with my life. It won't be worth much if you lose them. Don't worry, I won't. Good night, Jane. Good night, Sir Timothy. Good night. Good night, George. Strawbridge. Sorry I was out just been to market. Good morning. I've come to fetch George. The exhibition's opened already and he ought to be there. Well, I never. He's usually up bright and early. Come in there. Come in. He'll just see. George? George? Are you up, George? Come in. <laughs> oh, visitors. Come in. Make yourself at home. <laughs> oh. Jane Strawbridge, what are you doing here? You lazy good for nothing. Father had to open the exhibition without you. I'm terribly sorry, Jane, but my clock doesn't get alarmed anymore when I oversleep. <laughs> Are you going to introduce me, George? <laughs> yes, of course, uh, Jane. This is a, a friend of mine, um, a very old friend, Mr... Uh, Algernon Lennox Fist and all, but uh, call me Algie. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do? Algy? Well, uh, taking this, that and the other, I do very well, don't I, George? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'll wait for you downstairs, George, and please hurry. I'll be ready in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Ladies, ladies, your attention, please. You ladies have been selected as a committee representing the housewives of Tangleton to inspect the Strawbridge Payton Medical Kitchen. And now, ladies, everything in my medical kitchen is a Strawbridge Payton and works by electricity. What? No gas? You must agree, madam, that electricity is much better. Well, I don't agree. Shocking stuff, electricity. There's nothing like coal, oh, I What do you mean, coal? Wood fire is the thing. I like paraffin the best. I think everything is perfectly delightful. Thank you very much, Thank you very much, madam. And now the candidate himself will demonstrate how to prepare, cook and serve a strawberry miracle meal. Ladies, ladies, oi! Ladies, if you'll all go in the corner, I'll give you the works. I mean, I'll show you the works. Now, Sir Timothy Strawbridge calculates that the average housewife walks four and three quarter miles in her kitchen every day. Now, is your journey really necessary? Now, the Strawbridge Payton revolving kitchen floor saves mileage, saves shoe leather, and it also saves time. Well, well, I, I never never you are around the bell. I will now show you how to make an omelette with egg powder by the Strawbridge Payton process. First of all, you take a dish from the utensil gravity cabinet. Contact? Contact. Out she comes. Then you put in the egg powder and the miracle vitamins. Contact. Contact. The conveyor belt conveys the dish into the Strawbridge patent. Uh, DL, 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 well, there's the sign. Read it yourselves. Fancy, it's made of glass. Whatever for? So as you can see what you're cooking. I always know what I'm cooking. Yes, I know, Mrs. but this lets you see how it's going on, do you see? Oh, in case it don't work. It always works, madam. I never heard such twiddle twaddle. The strawberry paint not working. It's impalable. Oh, 
Give me some more for eating it. Well, ladies, shall we wash up? I knew there was a catch in it. Oh, there's no catch, madam. No, when a meal is eaten, all the plates come through here. You just press the button and off you go to the pictures. The Strawbridge automatic paint and washer upper does all the work. Hard work never hurt nobody. George. Hello, Jane. Where are the phones? Oh, they're safe at home, locked up. But you must get them here for the meeting, because it's starting very soon. Yes, well, I'll be leaving right away. I'm just going to speed this up a bit. Well, hurry up. All right, I will. Now, ladies, we've got to move faster. Foster! Well, I've been expecting you. Where's all my things gone? I've sold them. Sold them, but you couldn't have. I could and I did. Here's the court order. I must get my things back. Who's bought them? It was the bailiff himself. He took such a fancy to the bed and other things, he couldn't have bear to part with them. Did he buy that little cupboard that stood by the side of the bed? He bought everything. Oh, I've got to find him. Just a minute, Gribble. Maybe I can help you to get your things back after all. Oh, Mr. McClure, if you only could, I'd be ever so grateful. Mm. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, Gribble. Yes? I'll get your things back for you, and I'll give you 50 pounds beside it. You will? Oh, that's good. What's the catch? I want those forms you collected. The forms? Aye, laddie, the forms. You mean, you'll give me back my furniture if I, I give you the forms? I would. And 50 pounds as well? I would. You want the forms very bad, don't you? I do. Then, Mr. Oxbold will give you 100 pounds for them, wouldn't he? He would. <laughs> You never mind, that's my business. What's your answer? <laughs> my time is very limited, Mr. Bennett. If Mr. Gribble doesn't arrive quite soon, I'm afraid I shall have to leave. Oh, but he's sure to be here any moment now. Sir Dudley, if you don't mind, we'll start the meeting without Mr. Gribble. If you'll just say a few words first. Yes, yes, only to please. But it would be better if the candidate were here, wouldn't it? Don't I know it. I expect he does too. Father, call the meeting to order. To order what? Only silence. Use your gavel. I'm sorry, my dear. A slight technical hitch. Well, pick it up in your hand and slam the table with it. I wouldn't dream of it. Let the machine do its job. This is a strawbridge patent. All strawbridge patents work. Ah! Support for Tangleton's town planning candidate, George Gilbert Gribble. Who unfortunately has been delayed, but will undoubtedly be here at any minute. In the meantime, I would like to introduce Dudley Woodstone, the Under Secretary for the National Bureau of Municipal Research and Reconstruction. Sir Dudley. Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a great honor... Well, Gribble, did you get those forms? No, I didn't. Gribble played a dirty trick on me. After all, I've done for him. Well, where are they? I don't know. Mr. Bailiff, Mr. Bailiff, I want my things. I've got to get my things back. I haven't got your things. Well, all except the bed. I sold the rest of the bells at the junk man. <laughs> but I've got to find him. I want my forms. Forms? I didn't sell him no forms. But didn't you sell him the little cupboard that was at the bedside? Yes, and he only gave me three and a tanner for it. Then you've sold all my forms for three and sixpence. Where is he? How should I know? Somewhere around the street with his bear, I expect. <laughs> I only bought the stuff because I heard the Tankleton Arms over there needed some furniture. I'm looking for a piece of furniture. But this is not a furniture shop, it's a hotel. Is it? I know, but you bought a piece this morning. It's mine. I want it. Where is it? Where's what? It, it's a little thing of it, Bob. I put it in the cupboard at the side of the bed. It, that's what I need. First of all, on the right. Come 
and shut the door. I want you to look at my right leg. What do you think of it? Very pretty, miss. Aren't you the doctor? Wrong number. Ah! Ah! Excuse me. You've got something I want. You better go away. You don't let me explain. No. made through them at me, they fell in the canal and they sunk. Oh, then we're sunk. So you're letting the little people down? No. All those people who trusted you to get decent homes for them? No, Jane, I'm going to fight for them, fight to the very end. That's the way to talk. Come over here. Sir Dudley, this is our candidate, George Gilbert Gribble. I'm pleased to meet you, Sir Dudley. I'm very glad to see you, Sir Dudley. This is a big honour, Sir Dudley. <coughs> Pardon you. Ladies and gentlemen, I withdraw that last remark. Now, I want you to vote for me in the coming election. Why should we vote for you? What do you stand for? Well, if you'll shut up a minute, I'll tell you what I stand for. I stand for a decent town where decent people can have decent houses to live in. And I know a lot of you stand for that too. People, but the big people like Mr. Oxbold are trying to stop us from getting the things we want because it'll cost money. Prove it! Prove it! Yes, I'll prove it. They tried to destroy our farms, the ones that showed what we really wanted. Mr. Oxbold had them wrapped up in paper and told me to burn them. That's the truth. Of course, I didn't know what was in the package. He told me there were only a lot of old papers. But I didn't burn them. I put them in the salvage like the law tells you to. And all your kids helped me get them back again. Show us the fall. Yes! 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 Don't worry, Jane. Show us those four. Shut up, you idiot. You've got those forms in that box. Get hold of it. Yes, Mr. Oxford. I put the forms in that little cupboard last night. You wouldn't be interested in seeing them now. They're all crumpled and dirty and... Well, you, you don't want to bother about them. I'll give him to him when he wakes up. Let me show them my Strawbridge Automatic Universal Recordex. Yes, Sir Timothy Strawbridge is going to show... Hey, you! Stop! <laughs> Well, there they are. And there stands the crook in front of them. 
There he is with the voice of the people accusing him to his face. I demand to be heard. I demand fair play. Gribble dares to accuse me of having tampered with those public opinion forms and of ordering him to burn them. I have never seen those forms before in my life. I am telling the truth. If you told us you were lying when you were standing up, you'd still be lying. <laughs> I defy you to prove that those forms were ever in my possession or that I had anything to do with them. Yeah. Oh, 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 you can't prove it. You want me to prove it? Yeah. All right. Yes. All right, I will. All the forms were in Mr. Oxbold's office. So were councillors Oxbold, Philbert, Jug and Stubbin. I object. Oh, you do. But when Mr. Oxbold told me to burn the forms, you didn't object then, did you, Councillor Stubbins? I object. I objected at the time. I told Oxbold not to do it. Didn't I, Oxbold? I told him most emphatically that it was against the law to burn any public documents. <laughs> <laughs> there are Press the button. Why? What'll happen? You will see what'll happen. <laughs> I don't like it. Go on, press it. <laughs> Darling, it's a speaking likeness of you. This is Strawbridge patent number 46,509. <laughs> Turned out nice again, isn't it? <laughs> 